Welcome to Lotus Bob's Garage. Today's video is about the replacement alternator that I put on because the original alternator that came with the car just didn't work. When I first got the car, the alternator was just in a box. It hadn't been put on. So it took me a little bit of finagling to get it on and get the car ready to go. So finally, by the time I got it ready to go, I found out that there was a problem with the alternator. It really didn't work. For the very most observant, you'll notice that the uh, crossover pipes from the exhaust manifold to the intake manifold are still there because at this point in time, I hadn't taken the exhaust manifold off to change it out for a header. This rather corroded and ugly looking box is a voltage regulator, which I think is really the reason why that the system wasn't working properly, because it just didn't work. This alternator, although it looks pretty new, uh, came with the car in the box, as I said, uh, but not hooked up. Uh, and once I did get it onto the car, started the car up, I found that it just wasn't working. So if you look carefully, this is a Delco Remy made in England. Now, I'm not saying it's got anything to do with Lucas, so that's not why it didn't work. But let's also just take a moment and uh, talk about what exactly uh, is happening in car's electrical system. Electrical systems, as you know, uh, have to run on DC. So you have an all, uh, the option of having a generator that makes DC, as some of the older cars had, or an alternator, which makes alternating current. Now, if it makes alternating current, you have two things you have to worry about. One is converting the alternating current to direct current, and the second is voltage regulator, so that it stays at 12 volts even when you're idling and doesn't uh, run into overvoltage when you are going at higher speeds. I was able to find a US-made Delco Remy alternator that was just about the same size as the English one. The key thing is that the uh, US one had a built-in voltage regulator, so I didn't need to use that uh, Motorola device at all. I was able to bolt it on and uh, I had to make a special uh, adjustment arm because it didn't fit exactly the same way that the other one did. But after putting it in, the thing worked just fine. If you look carefully at the attachment to the uh, uh, transmission housing, uh, the original alternator, the ears were exactly the width of the uh, hole, the, you know, the, the boss on the transmission there. Uh, but the new alternator was a little bit different, so I had to put spacers in so that I could get the pulleys to line up. Well, I dug deep into the archives, and I was actually able to find the documentation that I uh, used when I put this alternator in. Uh, now, you got to remember, this was 20 years ago. This is 2004 when I actually did this work. But I found the pages here, uh, and if you look at them, they're actually... Uh, one of them down at the bottom says Ampicar, which is kind of funny because I knew a guy that had an Ampicar, actually had two of them uh, back in the day. But that's a whole other story uh, that uh, who knows me, <laughs> what I'll do with the video on that. But nevertheless, what I found was that I could make uh, the alternator work by using these diagrams. They, they really uh, kind of were just generic, but uh, they helped me to, to be confident that I could put a a, another alternator in and make it fit. If you want the actual links that those uh, documents are for, shoot me a, a DM and I will send you the uh, a, 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 a more, led, more a more readable copy. So there we have it. The car is all put together and it works. Uh, I wish I had a part number for you on the uh, American Delco Remy alternator, but you know, quite frankly, it's it's a pretty standard. Uh, small Delco uh, uh, alternator. I can't find any model numbers on it, so sorry for that, but thanks for watching.